Hello guys, welcome back to another Android application development tutorial. Today we are going to learn about the database available in Android framework called SQLite. So before going to create an Android example of SQLite, you must have some theoretical concepts about SQLite database. So here I create a simple presentation that will give you the basic concepts of SQLite database. So now we can start the presentation. You can use SQLite database in your Android app for saving, repeating or structured data such as contact information. Android store your database in private file spaces of your application and your data is secure because by default Android not allow any other application to access your database. The SQLite Open Helper class provides a useful set of APIs that contain simple methods for basic database operations such as read, write, delete and up update etc. The database operations may be long running so it is a better it is better to perform the database operation on a separate background thread such as async task or Indian service. So if you perform the database operations on the main UI thread, if the database operations is a long running process, then that may cause your application to not responding. For avoiding such situation, it is better to operate, it is better to perform the database operations on a separate thread. So now we can learn about how to implement a SQLite database in your Android application. So the first thing, you have to define a schema and contract class. Schema is the formal declaration of how database is organized. In Android, you can define your database schema using a companion class known as contract class. A contract class is a container for constants that defines names for URI tables and columns. The contract class allow you to use the same constants across all the other classes in the same package. This lets you change a column name in one place and have it to propagate throughout your code. Here is a simple example. So here is a simple example of contract class. Here the class name is feed reader contract. So for avoid accidental initializing, uh, we provide a default constructor for this class and here we create an inner class called the field entry that implements base columns. So here the, these are the constants. So these are the constants that define the schema. So here the constants are table name and two column name, title and subtitle. By implementing the base columns interface, your inner class can inherit a primary key field called ID that some Android classes such as cursor adapter need. It is not required, but this can help your database work harmoniously with the Android framework. So now we can learn about how to create the database. You can create the database from the constructor of SQLite Open Helper subclass. So here is a simple example. So here we create a class called Feeder Reader DB Helper. That is a subclass of SQLite Open Helper. So here we provide two constant variables, so database version and database name. So this is the constructor of the class. So there is no default constructor for SQLite Open Helper. We need a constructor with at least a context parameter. And then we have to pass the context, database name and database version to the superclass. So now we can learn about how to create a table in the database. For creating a table, you have to override a method called onCreate within subclass of SQLite Open Helper class. 
then you have to call the execute sql on sqlite database object and pass the create query as a parameter so here is the simple example so here is the method on create that contain one parameter sqlite database object so uh, here we call the method execute sql on the sqlite database object and you have to pass the create query as a parameter so now we can learn about how to put information into the database for writing into the database table you can create your own user method within the sqlite open helper class first get a handler to the sqlite database by calling the get the writable database method on the object of sqlite open helper subclass then create an object of content values class put the data into the content value object in the form of a name value pair finally call the insert method on sqlite database handler object and pass the table name and content value object as parameters so here is the example so here first we get a handler to the sqlite database for that here we call the get writable database database method now we create an object of content values and we put the data in the form of name value pairs into the content value object and finally we call the insert method on the SQLite database object so for that method you have to pass three parameter that contain the table name and the content values so here there is a second parameter we pass null for it the second argument tell the framework what to do in the event that the content value is empty that is uh, you did not put any values if you specify the name of a column the framework insert a row and set the values of the column to null if you specify null like in the code sample shown above the framework does not insert a row when there are no values that is the use of the second parameter now we can learn about how to read information from a database for read information from a database first obtain a handler to sqlite database by calling the method get readable database on sqlite open helper subclass create a projection of needed columns in the form of a string array specify your selection conditions and selection arguments in the form of a string and this will help us to avoid possible sql injection Finally, call the query method with the needed parameters on the SQLite database object. The query method return a result in the form of a cursor object. So here is the simple example. So first here we get a handler to the SQLite database. So here is the needed columns. So here the columns specify in the form of a string array that is called projections and here is the selection that means the condition and here is the selection arguments if there is sort order you have to specify the sort order in the form of a string and finally uh, we can call the query method with needed parameters so here we need seven parameters first one is the table name uh, second one is the projections that means the needed columns third one is the selections that means condition uh, fourth one is selection arguments uh, next one is the group by clause uh, last one if you pass null uh, it will filter by row groups and final one is the sort order so here the result is in the form of a cursor object so for read information uh, we have to pass that cursor object to look at a row in the cursor use one of the cursor move methods which you must always call before you begin reading values 
Since the cursor starts at position minus 1, calling move it to next places the read position on the first entry in the result and returns whether or not the cursor is already past the last entry in the result set. For each row, you can read a column value by calling one of the cursor get methods such as get string, get log, get boolean, etc. For each of the get method, you must pass the index position of the column you desire, which you can get by calling the get column index or get column index or throw. Uh, when you finish iterating through the result, call the close on the cursor to release its resources. So here is a simple example. So here we have an array list. So here we use a while loop for iterating the cursor. So this method will move the read pointer to the first row, first information. Then we call a method called get along. So here we get a long value that's why we call the get long if it is a string you have to call the get string method so you have to specify the column index for that here we call a method called the get column index or get column index or throw and you have to specify the index position or the column name itself and finally here we add each of the information to the array list after read information you have to call the method close on the cursor object now here uh, we can learn about how to delete information from a database. To delete information from a database, you must provide a selection criteria that identifies the rows. The database API provides a mechanism for creating selection criteria that protects against SQL injection. To perform delete operation, call the delete method on the SQLite database object. Here is a simple example. So here we specify the selection criteria and here is the selection argument. And finally, we call the delete method on the SQLite database object. So for this method, you have to pass parameters like table name, selection that means condition and selection arguments. Now here we can learn how to update a database. Here is a simple example of how to update a database. So here uh, we get a handler to SQLite database by calling the method get a writable database. So here specify here first put the new values in the form of a name value pair to the content values object. So now here specify the condition that means uh, the column name you want to update. Now specify the selection arguments. So these statements avoid possible SQL injections. And finally, we call the update method on the SQLite database object. I hope you get the basic concepts of how to implement SQLite database in your Android application. From the next video onwards, we are going to learn each of these concepts with an example. For getting more video updates, please subscribe this channel now. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.